Hello everyone. This video is part of a series where our main goal is to learn the basics and the most important principles of TypeScript. And for that, we are using a React project where we will develop a very simple yet quite functional e-commerce application, right? So everything is going to be handled in the client side. There will be no databases, no connection to the back end. If you're more in, if you're interested in a more complex example or a more complex project, then I'd highly suggest the social media application series that I am currently developing. I'll put a link to that playlist in the video. Uh, so in the description, you can check that out if you want to. So in the previous video, we integrated Material UI into our component and we saw how different, how we can pass information via props in order to customize our components. We also created a basic component called greeting text, which we are not going to use, but it was just for demonstration purposes. So I can remove this from here and this component from here. And what I want to do in this video is a little bit more of um, management tasks. So as we develop our application, if we don't have any kind of checks in the code that we are writing, it can be very, it is very likely that we will start accumulating some bad practices. So for example, if I declare a variable that I never use, right? So const test, let's say, or let's say like this, never used. And I'm just going to declare this as a string, right? So my IDE already gives me a warning here that this constant is never used. And if I start my application, yarn start, then we will see that we will also have a warning in our console. Give it a couple of seconds. Exactly, there it is. So it tells us the never used is assigned a value, but never used. And it's this kind of warnings that we want to avoid letting them uh, build or letting them grow, letting them accumulate. So we want to avoid accumulating this kind of warnings, right? That's another thing that we want to avoid is, for example, some bad formatting. Imagine that I have my component something like this, right? I write my component something like this. It's very bad formatting. This will still um, uh, compile is no problem here, but it's it's hard to see which component belongs where. Maybe some indentation can be even messed up, or we can have a component all in one line, everything like this, and that's definitely very hard to read, right? Even for a simple component like this, we need to actively look for the beginning of the button tag and the end of the button tag in this whole line. So this is not something that we want. Right? Still, it will compile, no problems, but we definitely want to prevent this from entering our code. So there are two ways we can do that. The first one, we can set up a couple of commands and run them manually every time we want to clear up our code and check for errors. And the other way that we can do it, which is the one we will use here, is to set up automatic checks on my code whenever I am about to commit something to my repository. Okay, so this sounds, I think, very strict in the beginning because it's not going to allow me to compile or to save anything if the LinkedIn checks, for example, they don't pass. Warnings are okay, we can commit with warnings, but if we have errors, then this is not going to be committed. And we definitely want such a thing, even though it may sound strict in the beginning, we definitely want something like this because this will definitely help us in the long run to have a very clean and a very easy to understand project. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is you can see that React is running the linking or is, is linking our code when we start the project. But I want to have a command that I can use whenever I want in order to link the code. And luckily for us, that's very easy. <laughs> we can come to the package.json file and we can simply add a new command here. So here we have start, build, test, and eject. And I'm going to write another command, lint. And what this is going to do is it will simply run yes lint within my source folder. Now, 
you may be wondering where is this, this ESLint coming from and this comes from the bunch of applications or packages that were installed whenever we used the create react app command right so we don't have to automatically or actively install the ESLint it is already installed as a dependency for for example our react scripts um, package right so if I come here within the react scripts I think that ESLint would be mentioned here exactly so yes lint is mentioned as a dependency of this package so it is already installed in our project of course if you would set this up from this from scratch you would need to add this yes lint you would need to install yes lint and some of packages and plugins if you're interested in the social media application playlist we do this setup from scratch right so if you're interested i will also put a, a link to that specific video. It's the first video in the playlist, so I think it should be quite straightforward to find it. So now that we have this command, we can actually run npm run lint. And as you can see, it already gives me the error that React was giving me when we were starting the application, right? So now if I come here to my app.tsx and I remove this unused variable and then I run the code again, then I shouldn't see any errors. Okay, so we have the command for linting and that's one that we definitely want to have, but we still are missing the command for making things more beautiful, right? As you can see, this is still very ugly, although it's passing the ES lint command. So we will use something that's called prettier, right? Prettier is a package that is made available um, yeah, for free. I mean, it's, it's an open source project and it allows us to very quickly format our code according to either some best practice guidelines or some custom rules that we define in our end. So in order to do that, I'll simply run yarn add prettier, right? Like this and let it install. Okay, now it's installed. And now we can add another command to our package.json file. And this command is going to be prettier. And I will write it like this, prettier fix and prettier check. And we will see why in a bit. So. For the prettier fix, what I want to do is I want to run prettier in my source directory, right? I think that something like this is going to work. Or we can also just write dot here and with the flag check, right? And the other one that I want to write is prettier check. Oops, sorry, I missed, I, I missed here. This should be with the flag right. And this one is going to be prettier with the flag check within our dot uh, directory, right? So basically the source directory. But I think that because we have a public directory here, um, we may not want to check it. So instead of directly running this command, let's add one file here that is called dot prettier ignore. And this file is going to ignore some directories we can list the directories we want to pretty or not to check so node modules for sure public and build right i think that these three directories so because the build is the output of the build command it doesn't make sense to check it so let's see what happens now if i run yarn or npm run prettier check oops it's saying that we have some problems with our coding. And of course, we have some problems with style because there's this horrible one line element, right? So how do we fix that? And that's exactly why we defined two scripts, right? We have yarn prettier check and yarn prettier fix. And now with the fix, we'll see that the formatting of our element is directly or is automatically adjusted, right? And that's definitely something we want. So one last thing I want to do here for this prettier command is that I don't really like the double quotes. I prefer single quotes. So we can customize this by adding a file dot prettier RC. And then here we can pass some configuration, right? We pass it as a JSON object 
and we'll say single quote and it's already identifying the exact command that we want that's auto completion from my IDE probably you also have it or it's possible to set up it in your IDE but now if I change the single quote command to true and I run prettier check it's going to fail right because now it has double quotes everywhere the, the default of prettier is double quotes so if I run prettier fix then it's going to fix and bring back the single quotes and here this is still not um, with a single quote within my JSX. I think that we can pass this here. JSX single quote, true. Let's see if this is going to, to solve our problem. Yes. So now we have single quotes as well within the JSX. I would expect the single quote to be the only necessary one. I'm wondering why this is not the case here, but we can just customize it like this. Good. So we are done setting up the two commands that we want to have. We want to have lint and we want to have prettier colon fix. And why do we want to have these two? Because we want to run these two commands before we commit anything to our repository, right? So now in order to do so, we will leverage something that is called a git pre-commit hook, right? What is a pre-commit hook? A pre-commit hook is an action that is going to be executed every time or we try to commit something. So a pre-commit, right? We have post probably. We have also some push actions that we can say to Git. We have uh, several hooks that we can use to customize the behavior of Git by adding additional functionality to these hooks. So how do we use this Git pre-commit hook? And I think the best way, or at least not the best way, but the way that I'm using to, to work with here is to use a package called Husky and a package called Lint Stage. So I will add them and you saw and you see that now I'm using Yarn to add and I will add them as dev de dependencies, Husky and Lint Staged. And I will explain it to you how exactly they work in a few moments. Just give it a couple of seconds for them to install. And now that they are installed, we can come back to our package.json file and start setting up our commands, right? So the way that this works is that I can, so Husky is a package that allows us to set up these pre-commit hooks, right? And I can use my package.json file to add the Husky configuration. So within the Husky object, I can define a series of hooks and here you see that we have a list of all the hooks so pre-commit, pre-push, post-commit, post-merge, post-rewrite, post-update, lots of hooks that can be used here. But for our purposes the only one we are interested in is the pre-commit, right? And in within the pre-commit hook we want to run this command lint staged. Right? And then the lint staged command, we now need to define what exactly we want to run every time this lint staged command is executed, right? So, and for this, we can also add another um, component or another key to our package.json file, and that is called lint staged. And this again has some autocomplete but the idea here is that lint staged is going to run a series of commands in the files that are staged for commit. Okay, so that means that if I change two files, for example, the app and the index.tsx, then it's going to check these two files for pre-commit, or it's going to check according to whatever commands that we pass here. And then if these commands do not pass, then the pre-commit hook is not going to allow us to commit the changes. So how do we set this up? Well, we need to tell lint stage which files we want to examine, right? So all the files from our source directory and with two extensions, ts and tsx for the moment, right? Maybe we later on will add some style lint rules and we could add the CSS files but for the moment, ts and tsx are the only two files 
that we are or the only two extensions that we're interested in and then we pass an array and this array is an array of commands that we want to run when the linty staged command is called so the first one is the prettier fix command because this prettier fix command is going to allow us to change the formatting of the file and address some of the issues that could be a problem for ESLint. So we want to run this first, then we want to run yarn lint, and then we could run git add here, but I don't think this is necessary. I think it automatically adds, but if you see that there is some weird behavior here and it's not adding some files for commit, then you can just add that git add command and this could help. I'm not really sure. Sometimes the lint stage misses a few files, maybe because of the, um, maybe because of, of the setup, maybe because the file was not staged and then we ran prettier and prettier changed the file. So the file got changed, but didn't get, it uh, was not added to the, to the bundle because it was not staged in the beginning, right? So maybe here, um, I think that prettier check or prettier write is, is a good command for us to have, but they may have this very small consequences. So I think this is all the setup we need. Let's see here what happens if we try to commit something, right? So I have here in my Git repository and I added a couple of things to, to the repository. So I would expect to have some changes. Now you can see I have two staged files, tsx, and uh, so app.tsx and index.tsx. And let's add these files. Here, I think that everything should be working fine. Maybe we can come back, bring this back to our single line just to see how this is going to change as a result of prettier. And let me check once again, this is the expected command, prettier fix. So now if I add everything and then I run a commit and here I just follow the conventional commits guidelines so i normally name it as feet or refactor core fix something like this yeah so um if you're interested in reading about this conventional commits is something that helps us keep our messages organized follow some conventions right also very useful for semantic release so um, but this is not the goal of this project it's just a habit that i have so i'll keep using it here add so here is add eslint prettier husky lint staged, right? This is all that we did. So let's see what's going to happen now. And as you can see, husky is already going to start running these checks for us. And because both checks pass, then the files are committed. And if I go back to my app.tsx, now you see that it was automatically formatted, right? So this is something that is very useful for us. We don't need to worry about running prettier beforehand. It's going to run it on the cloud, so on the fly for us, whenever we try to commit something to our code. So I think this is good enough for this video. We have done a lot of progress and now we have some automated checks in our tool. And then we can, we don't need to worry about these details when implementing our application. This will be taken care of by the Husky and the lint staged and the packages that we added today to, to, to our project. Okay. So that's it for today. And if you want to get notifications every time I upload a new video, or if you want to follow the other open series, the other open playlists, make sure to subscribe. You will get a notification every time a new video is available and then you can check it immediately. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.